Courtney, it's time to do the Castlevania video. I don't want to. Courtney, come on, you have to do it. No. You promised you would. I am not wearing the headband. You have to wear the headband. No. Courtney. Mm. Blah. Die, monster! You don't belong in this world! It is not by my hand that I am once again given flesh. I was called here by humans who wish to pay me tribute. Tribute? You steal men's souls and make them your slaves. I guess the same could be said of all religions. I'm done. No, Courtney, wait, hold on. I'll let you be Dracula. No. For countless generations, the vampire myth has terrified people of all ages and in all corners of the world. Bram Stoker's Dracula, published in 1897, brought to the public eye a story that is being retold and adapted to this day. My personal favorite is Konami's Castlevania series, inspired by the horror movies of the 1930s and 40s. There are nearly 40 games in the franchise which spans almost 30 years, so there's plenty of material to cover. Of course, I'd be missing a huge opportunity if I skipped the first game of the series, Castlevania for the NES. Castlevania, first released for the Famicom Disk System in 1986, just in time for the Halloween season, made its way to the NES in 1987 for the Western market. Since its release, Castlevania has received critical acclaim and been widely regarded as one of the best games on the NES. It's also been re-released on numerous consoles, spanning as far as the Commodore Amiga and the Nintendo 3DS. And can you blame them? Castlevania is nearly 30 years old and it still holds up as a game that's fun to play. It's true that video games age, but this one aged like wine. There are still times during the day where I pull out my DS just to play some Castlevania. The design of Castlevania is simple. Castlevania is a side-scrolling platformer where your goal is to whip your way through Dracula's castle, encountering villains from classic horror films like Frankenstein's monster, Medusa, and the... 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 the bat. In a lot of these classic platformers, the best strategy is to rush through the game, hitting every enemy before they get a chance to hit you back. But this won't work in Castlevania. You have to take Castlevania slow if you want to be successful. Although subsequent replays may lead to better results at speed, the only way you're going to do well on your first try is if you take your time. Each jump takes planning. Each attack needs perfect timing. Taking out a boss might take more tries than you've ever needed on a Mario game, but that's intentional. Who filled my cup with spiders? <laughs> I, I thought it'd be spooky. <laughs> Sorry. Back in the day, cartridge space was a premium, so you couldn't fit a lot of game onto a small cartridge. By making a game possible, but extremely challenging, a player could get a considerable amount of playtime out of playing a game like Castlevania without that time feeling boring, like a waste. In addition, the added difficulty made the game feel like a real challenge and a fun experience, rather than a boring, passive one. They didn't do a bad job with graphics, either. Visuals are crisp and clear, and despite the limited NES color palette, Konami's use of color theory is on point. Additionally, there's a sense that you're rooted to a true location. Each locale is connected to the next, all the way up to the final fight in Dracula's Tower. Castlevania even abandons traditional platformer conventions, 
like floating platforms, to lend a sense of true dimension to levels. Platforms are rooted to the walls behind them. Even when there's a hole in the floor, it's easy to see that the ground crumbled away, rather than Dracula building a castle with intentional gaps. The music's not half bad either. In fact, it's pretty fantastic. That said, as good as the American soundtracks were, the Japanese versions of the Castlevania games were augmented with special chips that added more sound channels than the standard American cartridges would support. Castlevania is meant to be a big collection of homages to classic horror movies. This is most apparent on the opening screen, where the title is framed in sprocket holes from a strip of film, and the end credits, where unusual corruptions of the names of famous horror actors, writers, and the like are displayed. Although that's not the only homage the Castlevania games made, this art seems kind of familiar. I mean, hell, Simon Belmont himself looks like a certain barbarian I know. Hey, Al, I found Castlevania 2 on eBay for only 350